please remain standing for the national anthem. of these 238 seniors. High school graduation is one of life's most memorable events. The express purpose of this ceremony is to recognize these students who have successfully completed the program of studies required by our school district to receive a high school diploma. I want to express a special welcome to parents, family members, and guardians of the members of this senior class. I would also like to acknowledge all alumni of Warrensburg High School. Please raise your hand if you are a former graduate of Warrensburg High School. As superintendent of the Warrensburg R6 School District, and more importantly, a proud member of this same group of people, we congratulate all the graduates and look forward to you joining us all as alumni of this great school. Seniors of the class of 2013, you began this journey 13 years ago, and you have now completed that journey. You have earned the best seats in the house. Congratulations. An event like this can only take place with the support and effort of many individuals. Please allow me to recognize just a few. Honored guests on this stage this evening from the front row from my left are Jerry Krause, counselor, Kelly Nemo, counselor, Chris Combs, Warrensburg High School instructor, Sir Simona Dillingham, principal, Sarah Chapman, assistant principal, Dr. Brett Pommel, Assistant Principal, Rick Schmidley, Counselor, Dr. Larry Landwehr, President of the Board of Education. On the second row from my left, Mr. Rick Miller, Board Member, Dr. Mark Curtis, Board Member, Mrs. Teresa Collins, Board Member, Dr. Michael Scott, Assistant Superintendent, Dr. Andy Cole, Assistant Superintendent, Mr. Morris Collins, Board Member, Mrs. Lisa Dyer, Treasurer of the Board of Education, and Mrs. Beth Rutt, Vice President of the Board of Education. Please join me in thanking these folks. I also want to take this opportunity to, opportunity to recognize all the faculty and staff from the Warrensburg R6 School District, many of who are with us this evening. The graduation of a student is the culmination of the efforts of all staff members. These efforts began the moment a student enters kindergarten, or sometimes preschool, and continues through this very moment. At this time, I would like for every faculty and staff member here this evening to stand and be recognized.
As you arrive this evening, you enjoy the outstanding musical selections performed by the Warrensburg High School Band. The band has earned a reputation for excellence and is under the direction of Mrs. Stephanie Sikelski. Please join me in expressing our appreciation to the Warrensburg High School Band. On behalf of the Warrensburg R6 School District, I would also like to acknowledge and thank the University of Central Missouri for their cooperation and assistance in allowing us to hold our graduation ceremonies here at UCM. We greatly appreciate our many partnerships and our strong relationships uh, with this fine institution. Please join me in thanking UCM President and tonight the proud father of one of our graduates, Dr. Charles Ambrose and the University of Central Missouri. I've identified many individuals who helped make this event possible. However, I know there are others who have not been acknowledged. Students, there are many people who made certain you had the opportunity to, opportunity to be here this evening. You took the opportunities provided to you, worked hard, and earned this diploma. Please do not forget to thank your family, your teachers, your friends, and others who supported you and encouraged you. Many of these people are here tonight, however, others are not. Please join me in a moment of silent reflection and appreciation. Thank you. Later in the program, the names of each senior will be read as they cross the stage. I ask that everyone in attendance here tonight be mindful of the importance of this ceremony and give it the respect it deserves. Each and every student and his or her family deserve our respect and attention. In consideration of this, we respectfully make the following requests of those in attendance. Please remain seated so those around you can observe the ceremony. Noisemakers such as air horns are not appropriate during the ceremony and should not be used. This is disruptive and disrespectful to the ceremony. Please refrain from using noisemakers until the ceremony is completed. Please listen attentively so those around you can also hear. On behalf of the administration, the school board, faculty, staff, and most importantly, these 238 students, I ask you to make, help make this a dignified, memorable ceremony. Thank you for your consideration. Later this evening, project graduation will take place. I encourage this senior class to take full advantage of the food, fun, prizes, and activities planned. On behalf of the district, I extend our sincere appreciation to the parents and patrons involved in making project graduation possible. At this time, I'd like to ask the senior, the senior ensemble to come forward. This outstanding group is under the direction of Mr. Matthew Halton.
It is my pleasure to introduce to you our speaker for the night, Mr. Chris Combs. He is married to Becky, which he considers his greatest blessing. He has two daughters, Leah and Anna, and a little boy, Jason, who is two months, all for whom he would do anything. He graduated 20 years ago, 1993, from Camden High School and earned a BS with a double major in biology and chemistry from College of the Ozarks in 1997. He spent three years in graduate school in the biochemistry department of the University of Missouri, Columbia, when he felt a calling to teach. He taught for six years before he and his wife served as church planters for the International Mission Board in Serbia. Having no regrets, we hired him over an internet phone call. This is his fifth year at WHS teaching chemistry, a total of 11 years in education. He enjoys baseball, football, basketball, tennis, biking, and making his kids laugh. He told me he loves Jesus and tries to do the best he can to act like it. Please welcome Mr. Combs. Good evening, parents, family, friends, Board of Education, administrators, fellow faculty members, and most especially, good evening to the class of 2013. Thanks for having me as your speaker. I really am deeply honored. It is a great blessing and privilege for me to be here tonight. Um, obviously, we're here to celebrate a significant milestone for you guys, but I was hoping maybe we could take a more informal tone. I have three kids at home uh, who I love deeply, but every year it seems like I adopt about 120 more that come through my classroom, uh, and many of those are you. So tonight, I'd like to have one more talk with my kids. <laughs> it's important to understand that tonight is not the end of your education. It is a milestone and yet it's a beginning of the learning that you will have for the rest of your life. With that in mind, I have some questions that maybe we can answer together or maybe not. If you've heard any of these laugh. Why in the world are there, is there braille on the drive through ATM buttons? <laughs> Why are apartments so close together? Do you know? Why do we drive in a parkway and park in a driveway? Seniors, anyone? No? In basketball, why isn't a slam dunk considered offensive goaltending? I would never know. Um, who named the letter W? W. They're V's? Come on, come on. Why would someone say to you, can I ask you a question? I think they did. Is it right that there is consumer debt counseling available paid for by the federal government? 16 trillion, that's all I'm saying. Why is abbreviation such a long word? Who was the sick puppy that came up with the spelling for the word phonetic? I don't know. That's enough questions, I think. Um, now maybe some advice. One last chance for me to just tell you how I feel about you and maybe give you a couple pointers along the way. Some of these ideas are mine. Some of them are not. Uh, various sources, including King Solomon. Uh, some of them came from you. I'll let you guess who's who and which is which. Parents, this is a little disclaimer. You may have to ask your, your kids to fill you in a little bit. Some of these are stories that we've been sharing for three years now. When you're standing on a trash can hanging decorations, make sure the drawstring on your shorts is tied. <laughs> 
when someone offers to cook you lasagna, make sure that you know who she is and you know her very well. You'll, you'll have to ask. If you have to say to your friends, hey guys, watch this, before you dive off of a cliff into a lake, it's probably better not to dive. If you come home late and the front door is unlocked, you don't have to sleep on the doormat. <laughs> Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. Listen to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. I know right now you feel like your parents don't really understand. But in 10 years, you'll wonder what they think. And in 20 years, you'll wish that you could ask them about everything. Listen to your folks. Those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. And we all know people that run their mouth too much. Maybe you're looking at one, I don't know. I love this one. Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their tongues. So there's a chance you can fake it if you just keep your mouth shut. Your words have the power to encourage or destroy. Which one will you choose? One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. <laughs> We've talked many times about relationships, haven't we? This is a good one. Better to live on the corner of the roof than to share a house with a quarrelsome wife. I would encourage you, one of the most important decisions you'll make in your life is who you choose as a spouse. We spend lots of time searching about the performance of a car or the location of a house. Um, we spend years and years considering our career. I would encourage you that your spouse is a very important choice. A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. One of the most important things you'll be able to do in your life is to forgive someone. When you're angry, it doesn't hurt the other person. It tears you up. And so when you forgive them, it gives, it gives you freedom and you can go on. Success isn't always what people think. We tend to measure success with dollar signs, with power or position at work, maybe with fame. I would submit to you that success is very different. I love my wife. She's better than I am, and I'd do anything for her. I have three beautiful kids that mean the world to me. I love my God, and I wish to serve him with all my heart. I sleep well at night, and I think that's priceless. I would encourage you to seek similar things. The people around you are the important things. Not what you have, not where you work, not what you earn. It's people. I would encourage you to have success there because that's truly meaningful. Two more. Don't go to prom with a girl you just broke up with. <laughs> it's a bad deal. And above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. All right, in closing, seniors, I need you to look at me. I need your eyes. This is really important. I want you to hear this. When someone or something puts you down in this life, when they beat you up or they tell you that you're worthless, I want you to know that they're wrong. They're lying to you. They don't know the truth. God loves you and has given you immeasurable worth. You're special and you have an amazing future. You have people that love you and care about you. I can't wait to see where you'll go. I can't wait to see what you'll do. I can't wait to see who you'll become. I'm so excited for you. I wanna offer you congratulations, and I want you to know that I love you. You're always welcome in my room. Thank you.
each got to go our separate ways And now we're standing here helpless Looking for something to say We've been together a long time We never thought it would end We were always so close to each other This evening, in addition to recognizing each of you as graduating seniors at Warrensburg High School, we'd like to take a moment to recognize those of you who have earned the distinction of academic honors. To do that, when your name is called, we ask that you stand. We'll be inviting students to stand in three groups for academic honors. And please remain standing until the rest of the students in that group are standing. And we ask the rest of us to withhold our applause until that group is all standing. Students who have earned the distinction of graduating with the honor of summa cum laude, that is a cumulative grade point average over four years of 4.20 and above, are Catherine Ambrose, Sydney Carter, Christy Krause, Amber Dino, Charlie Edmiston, Leah Garrison, Abigail Gillum, Remington Hoyer, Seth Crayer, Christopher Long, Andrew Luberoff, Logan Means, Risa Mori, Alyssa Parcells, Chase Rausch, Tia Sarkar, Kimberly Summercamp, Zane Spaulding, Ozan Tarim, Jason Tian, Kaylee Van Blarkham, Madison Worley, Adam Wayrock, and Grady Chow.
those students earning magna cum laude, which is a 4.03 to 4.19 cumulative grade point average. Tyler Clausen, Ellen Fuller, Michelle Hammonds, Jessica Hill, Ashley Hobbs, George Krause, Mitchell Lawson, Jordan Leedstrom, Brett Marr, Presley Morgan, Maxwell Olson, Taylor Pickett, Caitlin Richard, Danielle Taylor, Andrew Whitney, Michaela Wilbanks. Those students earning a 3.87 to a 4.02 are being recognized as cum laude graduates are Paige Allowell, Anna Claire Baldwin, Logan Chandler, Kiana Collins, Hannah Dillingham, Austin Eichelberry, Taylor Godfrey, Brooke Geo, Brittany Harrelson, Caitlin Heath, Alicia Huff, Mary Hunsaker, Ashley Yeager, Zen Kant, Chase Levy, Kelsey Martin, Kristen Mickens, Ron Roden, Mary Ashley Sanders, Elizabeth Shore, Stephen So, Emily Thompson, and Tiffany Wiley.
But why are we the class who lived? Let's take a brief spin in our time turners to help us review. We have lived through the end of the Mayan calendar, Y2K, and several other apocalypses, in addition to swine flu, bird flu, and the end of the Twilight and Harry Potter series. We were alive for 9-11 and for Columbine. We survived natural disasters, celebrity disasters, and cell phone radiation. We lived through Barney, Walkman radios, hit cliffs, and the invention of the iPod. We have witnessed cell phones and computers grow smaller and seen cars and people grow larger. We survived elementary school recess battles, middle school fashion statements, and colds that lasted longer than some of our friendships. Just in high school alone, we've endured teachers who dropped aluminum poles to wake us up, and substitutes who could care less about our educations, agonized through 10-page research papers, sweated and kept score of the fights in freshman gym, trudged through math classes and tests in foreign languages, but I repeat myself. In short, we have withstood the incredible just to make it to this day. We are the class who lived. Though we don't bear the infamous lightning striped mark of our trials, we, like Harry Potter, were chosen for a task. Now, you may ask, what Kim is this wonderful purpose we are destined to fulfill? Why are we the class who lived? I believe the answer is that we are, each one, destined for greatness. Just as Harry, Hermione, Ron, and even Neville and Draco were born to change the wizarding world, we must set out to accomplish what our parents could not. We must strive to become the leaders of tomorrow or have it thrust upon us unwillingly. For tomorrow and its trials will come despite our best efforts to prevent them. However, we can choose how we are going to respond when they arrive. We are not only the class who lived, we are a part of the generation of change. Now, how are we going to accomplish these big, obscure plans we're destined for? The simplistic answer is action. As J.K. Rowling said, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live. But more specifically, the perfect potion for change consists of two parts positivity, three parts curiosity, three parts sacrifice, and of course, a whole lot of magic. By any standards, our world is steeped in despair and cynicism. My challenge to us all is to be positive in spite of the world. The first ingredients for change tell us that instead of dwelling on blunders, relish the chance to learn from them. And along those lines, I challenge us to take everything with a sense of humor. After all, as Missouri realist Mark Twain would say, the human race has one really effective weapon, and that is laughter. Though I personally wouldn't suggest fighting fire with blonde jokes, do strive to always be positive and possessing of good humor, for the world will burn us anyway. But at least we'll leave them asking, what could have possibly been so funny? The next ingredients are said to have killed the cat, though the fire is a more likely explanation. Staying curious and seeking knowledge with the persistence you would a snitch, this is truly the source of wisdom. I advocate that we stay curious because that is how we grow, how we make mistakes, how we fail beautifully. And I urge that we seek knowledge because that is how we will learn from our failings. For learning is not a passive state. It takes dedication and persistence. Therefore, I challenge us all to stay curious, seek knowledge, and continue to strive, even when Lord Voldemort stalks your every move. 
The third ingredient involves sacrifice. For if we live our lives with faith and hope, we will undoubtedly be obliged to question our very existence. I dare each of us to have faith and hope anyway, and to not shy away from sacrifice. After all, where would Harry Potter have been without Cedric Diggory? The final ingredient, magic. Tell the average adult that you still believe in magic, and their response would probably be along the lines of, oh, such a shame, that poor child lives in a fantasy world. That's because magic for them means flying cars, spells cast on princesses, potions brewed and boiled at the stroke of midnight, and wands used to light the paths of curfew-breaking wizards. But magic encompasses so much more. To Professor Dumbledore, words are our most inexhaustible source of magic, capable of both inflicting injury and remedying it. And to quote a song reminiscent of my Girl Scout roots, magic is a child, a friend, a smile, a song, the courage to stand tall. It's the sun that makes a rainbow out of rain. It keeps us striving to try and try again. Magic is the love that stays when good friends have to leave. And so, if asked by some skeptical adult if we believe in magic, I hope we will remember what magic truly is and that our answers will be yes, I do believe. Positivity, curiosity, sacrifice, and magic. We already possess the ingredients necessary for change. We need only choose each and every day that our lives should improve the world. Ultimately, as Dumbledore says, it is our choices that show what we truly are far more than our abilities. And what we are is the class who lived. Congratulations, class of 2013. Go forth. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Again, my name is Samuel Caballero, and I am honored to be speaking to you all today. When dreaming of this moment, I never thought I would look like a mixture of Whoopi Goldberg from Sister Act and Squints from the Sandlot. For those of you who know me, uh, oh gosh, for those of you who know me, or know of me, uh, you know that I'm the movie guy. I love watching movies, making movies, talking about movies, and even thinking about talking about watching movies. Needless to say, the nickname fits. So if you haven't figured out already, uh, this speech will be about movies. One thing that is always a tearjerker for audiences is the death of the protagonist. For example, what man can say they didn't sob after Patrick Swayze took on that bodacious wave in Point Break? What woman can say that they didn't cry after both characters die at the end of the notebook? Which seems impossible because you can't kill a god. I love you, Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Who could forget the death of Bill Murray when Jesse Eisenberg accidentally shot him in Zombieland? I still hate Jesse Eisenberg for that. I haven't gotten any reply from the 245 letters of mail to President Obama, but anyone who accidentally kills Bill Murray, even if it's fake, should be put on trial, and I stand behind that. Thank you. Uh, and finally, I think every American citizen can agree that the death of Apollo Creed in Rocky IV was the most devastating disaster in the history of cinema. To this day, I am still afraid of gigantic Russians. Uh, we can learn something significant from these deaths, though. Each character had no regrets when they died. Well, except for Bill Murray, whose only regret was voice acting in Garfield, but that's beside the point. <laughs> these characters had the willingness to be who they wanted to be. They had the drive to fight for what they wanted, and they had the courage to follow their dreams. 
During films and even novels, the protagonist always has what filmmakers and literature buffs call an arc. From the time you see the first shot of the film to the very end, usually the protagonist has changed in some way. They have learned from their mistakes and they have altered because of it. In the movie The Mighty Ducks, Coach Bombay, played by Emilio Estevez, at first is a jerk lawyer who only cares about himself. After driving home drunk one night, he is pulled over, arrested, and forced to perform community service as a punishment. Evidently, there have been rumors that Emilio's brother, Charlie Sheen, planned to make a remake of that scene titled His Real Life. <laughs> <laughs> Near the end of the film, Bombay learns to be a caring human being and a compassionate coach. He realized he wasn't the man he wanted to be, and he had the strength to start all over again. Students, when we leave this room, we leave high school. Some of us have felt the need to conform to our friends, to fit in, to be the people who others wanted us to be. I urge you not to be afraid to change. If Coach Bombay hadn't changed, he would have been a drunk driving jerk lawyer for the rest of his life. He would have never developed the compassion for the kids and would have never quit his job as a lawyer, which would have earned him a top-notch house, car, supermodel wife, over 300 TV channels, an indoor swimming pool, stock options, and floor seat season tickets to his favorite basketball team. Uh, now that I'm saying it out loud, he might have made the wrong decision there, but overall, he made a morally correct choice. Most of us have a dream. I'll be honest with all of you, throughout your lives, your dreams will probably change. There's nothing wrong with that. Four years ago, I'm sure all of us were very different people. We had a clear idea of what our high school experience was going to be like. Our goals changed. Our personalities changed. Our morals changed. Changing doesn't mean you are no longer yourself, but instead striving towards the person you want to be. The characters I mentioned earlier, they didn't know that day would be their last. This is a universally true statement. You probably won't know which day is your last either. It should be a goal to wake up every morning, take in a breath of fresh air, and know that today you are the person you want to be to meet your last moments of life and regret the decisions you've made and the person you've become is a travesty and I wouldn't wish it upon any of you. I'd like to end the speech with a quote from the curious case of Benjamin Button. The quote reads as follows. For what it's worth, it's never too late or in my case too early to be whoever you want to be. There's no time limit. Stop whenever you want. You can change or stay the same. There are no rules to this thing. We can make the best or the worst of it. I hope you make the best of it. And I hope you see things that startle you. I hope you feel things you've never felt before. I hope you meet people with a different point of view. I hope you live a life you're proud of. If you find that you're not, I hope you have the strength to start all over again. Thank you, class of 2013, and good night. of the class of 2013 have met the graduation requirements as set forth by the Missouri State Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and by the Board of Education of the Warrensburg R6 School District. I recommend to the Board of Education, to Board President Dr. Larry Landwer, and to the Superintendent of Schools Dr. Scott Patrick, that each of these candidates of the class of 2013 be recognized as graduates from Warrensburg High School. Dr. Landwer and members of the Board of Education, I present to you the class of 2013. Thank you, Mrs. Dillingham, and congratulations to the senior class of 2013. 
On behalf of the Board of Education of the Warrensburg R6 School District, I am pleased to accept the 238 candidates for a diploma from Warrensburg High School as presented by Ms. Dillingham. I also extend compliments to the entire faculty of the district for their combined efforts in preparing the class for this important evening. To the parents and guardians who have supported them, and especially to the members of the class who have worked hard to meet the requirements for a high school diploma. Based on the recommendations of the high school principal, we can now proceed with the ceremony recognizing the individual members of the class of 2013. Megan Brianne Adams. Ryan Gregory Adams. Paige Marie Allowell. Shaylin Tamara Alfred. Jared Kemper Allnut. Catherine Glenn Ambrose. Nico Ray Arabalo. Samantha Beza Gutierrez. Anna Claire Baldwin. Aaron Michael Beck. Corbin Joshua Bell. Jackie Marie Bennett. Jordan Lynn Berry. Brian D. Biondo. Devin Lee Boney. Kayla Rose Bracken. Caleb Lee Braun. Caleb Michael Brewer. Alistair Justin Brines. Anthony Deshaun Briscoe. Nathan Lee Brookshire. Jacob Dale Brown. Chanel Lynn Bruner. Elizabeth Ashley Bullock. Samuel Douglas Caballero. Jasmine Lene Carter. Sydney Nicole Carter. Christopher Charles Case. Sean Michael Chafee. Savannah Nicole Chambers. Logan Lee Chandler. Yeah, Logan! Isaac Angelo Chandra. Yeah. Caitlin Rose Cheney. Yeah. Kevin Shea Clark. Yeah. Tyler James Clawson. Yeah. Hannah Nicole Edith Cleveland. Yeah. Rennick Ian Clifton. Xavier Orion Cobb. Nicholas John Kadimo. Kyle Andrew Coggin. Kiana Rishon Collins. Malachi O'Neill Collins. 
Renee Corona Jr. Sean Allen Cotton Jr. Riley Jacob Stevenson Cox. Nicholas Dean Kreider. Christy Vale Kraus. Caitlin Elizabeth Daly. Riley Rochelle Danner. Ryan Wendell Davis. Linsa Naomi Dean. Allison Pantello Deer. Amber Rose Dino. Alexander Michael Day. Anna Jo Dillingham. Damon Duquesne Dixon. Austin Tyler Dahl. Aaron Richard Dryden. Cody Orion Dunsing. Levi Perry Duckison. Ryan Curtis Dyer. Charlie Ann Edmiston. Austin Lynn Eichelberry. Jennifer Ann Engelhart. Wyatt Lowell Ewing. Chase Bradley Farmer. Austin J. Anthony Vick. Albert Harold Fleer. Kristen Danae Fleehardy. Kylie Elizabeth Fossinger. Ellen Beatrice Fuller. Leah Marie Garrison. Goodwater. Darian Bishop Graham. Willis Alvin Grant II. Johanna Elizabeth Greenwood. Gareth William Benjamin Griffiths. Erica Brianna Gidry. Theron Brooke Geo. Gully. Caitlin Ray Hamlin. Jamie Michael Ham. Michelle Deering Hammonds. Randall James Hansen. Brittany Autumn Marie Harrelson. Whitney Rochelle Havnan. Michael Timothy Hayes. Caitlin Heath. Jessica Lee Hill. Ashley Elizabeth Hobbs. Levi Alwyn Holcomb. Christine Howell. Remington Corbin Boyer. Mason Scott Boyle. Alicia Marie Huff. Mary Teresa Hunsaker. Sandra Leanne Herzman. Brittany Nicole Jackson. Linnell Oliver Jackson. Ashley Marie Yeager. Rebecca Ann Jacoby.
Destiny Raven Nicole Jones. Kathy Ann K. Keller. Thomas Ray Kelly. Brianna Danae Kelso. Kyle David Kendrick. Zen Ye Kant. George Walter Krause. Seth Emmerich Prayer. Dylan Dean Poolman. Jonathan Scott Kuhn. Stephen Mark La Capricia Jr. Langford, Mitchell Franklin Lawson, Jordan Nicole Leedstrom, Chase Kendall Levy, Mallory Leanne Lewis, Shauna Cheyenne Lewis, Chelsea Marie Littleton. Christopher Walter Henry Long. Yeah, Chris! Angel Tobias Lopez. Andrew Lewis Luberoff. Morgan Ray Luchtemeyer. Katie Marie Major. Michaela Faith Martinez, Taylor Mackenzie May, Matthew Jean Maiden, Christopher Anthony McConnell, Michaela Carmela McElroy, Ashley Nicole McGuffey, Anthony 
Matthew Christian Robinson. Ron Nathaniel Roden. Jean-Pierre Michel Rodriguez Espinoza. Ashley Morgan Rogers. Brian Chase Rausch. Mary Ashley Elizabeth Sanders. Tia Anjali Sarkar. Ashton Marie Shell. Charles Allen Schaefer.
congratulations, graduates. I want to welcome you to a very distinguished group, the alumni of Lordsburg High School. We bid you farewell and wish you the best as you accept new challenges and begin new adventures. Thank you to all who attended this evening and helped make this a memorable evening for the graduates of 2013. Good evening and please travel safely going home. Thank you.